channel, Innovative Amazing Science. I'm back again with another life experience of mine. I still remember when our house was renovated. Approximately it took uh, three to four weeks for this entire renovation process and uh, the laborers used to wind up their work by 6 p.m. in the evening. And after each day's work, my father used to have words with them and uh, make their payments. One day after the work was completed, the laborers were talking with my father. I entered the house which was under renovation and I found a wire hanging and a lighted bulb. Then I wanted to touch the walls which were damp and I wanted to feel the texture of the cement. The moment I tried to touch the walls with my palm, you, do you know what happened? I got electrical shock. I was like so scared and I started screaming and calling my father because I did not understand why I got that electrical shock. My father investigated and observed that the wire's insulation was damaged and the exposed part of the wire was touching the damp wall. So that was the reason for which I got electrical shock. But I was too small to understand. So he started explaining how and why we get electrical shock. He then showed me an experiment how water conducts electric current and also showed me that how the conductivity is more in salt water as compared to the fresh water. I feel so euphoric to share my experience with you. Are you ready to do the same experiment with me? Let's get started. So the things required are two batteries, battery holder, buzzer, LED bulb, two crocodile clips, insulation pipe, some salt, a bowl. This is a circuit base which is very optional, a small wire and I have taken two long wires. So the first step which I am going to do is, I am going to fix the batteries into the battery holder. So first let me tell you, if you are holding this battery holder, the spring portion is the negative part and this one is the positive part. And if you observe the battery carefully, the point which is coming out, that is the positive end and this end doesn't have any protrusions. So this is the negative end. So I'm going to fix the negative to the negative part of the battery holder. So now my batteries are fixed to the battery holder. So the next step which I am going to do is just look here carefully which is the spring part. So the spring part here this is the negative part and this side is the positive end. Why I am telling you that this is the negative and this is the positive so that you remember because at the end we are going to fix the wires so that you can remember it properly. The spring part is the negative end and this one is the positive end which is opposite to the spring part. So now I am going to show you the buzzer. The function of the buzzer is like it gives us alarm. And you can see two points or two terminal. One is the short one, one is the long one. So the long terminal or the long point is the positive part. And the short one is the negative part. Then here I am having the LED. This LED bulb also has got two terminals. One is the long and one is the short one. So the long terminal is the positive end and the short one is the negative end. So now I will take any one wire, the long one 
I'm going to fix it to the battery holder. So you can see two points. Here you can see the spring one is the negative end and opposite to that is the positive end. So I'm just going to fix it, insert it and I'm going to just twist it around. See I fixed it and this other one to this side. Here I go. See I fixed it. So after fixing you can see my wires are attached to the battery holder along with the battery. And here if you observe the spring part is the negative part. So I have attached the purple wire to the negative part. And this one is the positive part. So I have attached the blue one. So my next step is I'm going to check whether my buzzer and LED are working or not. So I'll take this wire and the purple one is attached to the negative terminal and the blue one is attached to the positive terminal. So I'll take this buzzer and as I earlier said that the long one or the long terminal is the positive and the short one is the negative. So what I'm going to do is I'll fix the negative wire here and I'm going to test. So blue one is the positive. Oh wow! My buzzer is giving absolute alarm. Very good. So my buzzer is working. Now I'm going to test my LED. The same thing applies here. The long one is the positive terminal and the short one is the negative terminal. So I'll fix the purple one to the negative and I'm going to test it whether it is going to glow or not. Here I go. Hey, that's superb. See, can you see my LED bulb? And amazing. That means both my buzzer and my LED bulb is absolutely working fine. I'm going to take this negative end which is the purple one and I'm going to put this inside the crocodile clip and I'm going to twist it around. Here I go. I've twisted it and I'll keep it aside. I'll take another wire and I'm going to put it from bottom like this. Now it's the turn of my LED. So I can fix both the terminals to any of the wire. So I'm going to twist it again. See, I have fixed my LED to both the wires. Now, if you observe carefully, the LED has two terminals. One is the long one, which is the positive, and one is the short one, which is the negative. So, here, if you observe, the short one is connected to the white wire. Therefore, I am going to take the white wire which is the negative terminal and I'm going to put this inside the other crocodile clip and I'm going to twist it around. Well, my thing is done. So friends, I have connected the negative end which is the purple one to the crocodile clip. It's up to you to connect or choose the positive end also. But remember, if you choose the positive end, suppose the blue one, so here for the LED also, you have to choose the positive end and connect that positive end to the 
other crocodile clip which is here and then to look at or make it more beautiful I'll put this little bit down here see now my base is also ready with the LED bulb and my next step is I'm going to take this insulation pipe and I'm going to put it inside the positive end of the wire and the positive end of this wire I'm going to fix it and twist it around and bring my insulation tape on top of it and close this yes I'm done so now to check the circuit is complete or not we should join both the crocodile clips so now I'm going to join both the crocodile clips can you see the bulb is glowing if the bulb is glowing that means my circuit is complete that's amazing see my bulb how it is glowing that means my circuit is absolutely through and it is complete it is ready to check the conductivity of any material so first we will take a metal and check whether it is conducting electricity or not so here I'm going to take my bangle for that matter. I'll take this off. I'm going to test the conductivity now. I'll take the crocodile clips. Can you see how it is glowing? Superb. That means it is conducting electricity. Now we are going to check the conductivity of electric current in water. So, I'll add some water in this bowl and check the conductivity. I'll put this crocodile clips inside the water and just observe the LED bulb. Okay, if you carefully observe the LED bulb, it is glowing but it is very faint. Now let me add some salt in this water. I'll just mix my salt properly so that it dissolves. Again, I'm going to take this crocodile clips and put this inside the water and check whether the bulb is glowing or not. Look at it carefully. Can you see the bulb which is glowing very brightly? So what do we conclude? Salt water is good conductor of electricity as compared to the fresh water. To make my experiment more clear, let me now take this buzzer. Before that, I'll take the wire and I'm going to put it from beneath. Yes. And now you can see the wires are protruding from the base. So I'm going to fix this wire and twist it around to any of this terminal. So I have fixed both the wires and to the white wire which was the negative terminal I have fixed the pink wire to that. I'll 
push it a little down and from down if you observe the white one and the pink one are the negative terminal so the pink one I am going to fix it Uh, let me bring both the wires to the top so that it becomes very easy for you to observe. Just remember the pink wire is the negative end. So, I'll take this buzzer and I am going to twist this wire to the negative end of the buzzer. Now, let me test again whether my buzzer and my LED are working or not in the plain water. I'll pour some water. I'll put this crocodile clip on the water and see. Can you just observe both the thing is not working. But in this particular experiment, when the buzzer is connected to the circuit, the fresh water could not conduct enough electricity through it as the resistance of the LED and the buzzer has increased. So, let me test again with the salt. I'll add some salt to this water. And check again. Okay, I'm going to mix my salt. So let it dissolve. Yes, I am done now. I'll put this crocodile clips in the water and just observe what is happening. So what did we observe? I'm going to show that again. Yes. So what did we observe is we saw that the buzzer is triggered and it is giving good alarm sound. But when we are looking to the LED, it is glowing but not so bright. So therefore, what we conclude is that the salt water conducts electricity more as compared to the fresh water. Conductivity of the water depends on the concentration of the dissolved ions in the solution. This is because the NaCl salt that is the sodium chloride salt dissociates to ions. That is the reason the salt water is a million times more conductive than the fresh water. If you enjoyed the experiment, do like it and do not forget to press the bell icon which is right there on your screen. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.